to train for Everest and the Cairngorms are as bleak an environment as we can find in the UK. High altitude mountaineering is obviously a fairly hazardous occupation and rescue becomes very, very difficult. As all soldiers will know, carrying a stretcher is quite a difficult thing to do anyway, um, as we've you know, done in Afghanistan and Iraq, etc. Doing that at altitude when the brain is hypoxic with very little oxygen and it's minus 50 and the winds can be 50 miles per hour becomes even more dangerous again. So what we've been practicing is the scenario of one of our guys has gone down, getting the stretcher out, using our skills and drills, and also understanding just how difficult that would be for real. So John, we're gonna have a lower limb injury to you, a severe injury to you, we don't know the severity yet. We're gonna practice using the stretcher to evacuate him back to the North Cold. I'm quite a big believer uh, in combat stress. So I kind of jovially said to a few friends, I wanna stand on the highest point on earth and scream that it's okay to ask for help. Um, and thanks to this team of guys, that's exactly what we're gonna try and do. Team is stopped, we have a casualty, we're gonna carry out an assessment. Well, I've now done two tours of Afghanistan um, as a reserve officer. I found, went out on operations, I've worked in Nadi Ali and Shawkat and Helmand province. Um, you know, it's a pressured environment. We've gone out for what we thought would be um, a fairly standard sort of hearts and minds campaign to meet some of the locals. Um, and as we walked into, you know, one of the particular compounds just outside Shawkat and Nadi Ali, the gunfire starts to ring out. You know, the adrenaline instantly starts to, uh, to pick up. So suddenly your mental state is switched from one extreme to the other. And we're with a large group of you know, very young guys from infantry regiment. They'd only been in theatre for a few weeks. Um, and suddenly the guys look to the senior NCOs and they look to the officers to get control of that situation. And you become very aware that your lives are very codependent on each other's ability to do their work. Um, and those decisions you're about to take have a very, very serious consequence for you and for them. Suddenly I was back in my civilian life, my civilian job, um, and surrounded by a group of people that actually had no real understanding of what I'd been uh, or what I'd done or indeed what those emotions are. So I was at the checkout, you know, uh, that obviously the most complex of tasks, get my weekly shopping from, um, from the supermarket. And in fact, I'd asked the girl behind the checkout to swap something over for me. And she pretty much ignored me. Uh, she was too busy talking about whatever soap she watched on the telly the night before and then treated me with sort of a, a degree of disdain, really. I felt really cross, really angry. I kind of flashed at her to use an army expression. Yeah, and literally dressed her down. Later that afternoon, I was walking my dog and it sort of occurred to me that actually my response was A, pretty over the top and B, sort of not really normal. And I just started to ask myself, you know, why did I do that? And what was going on about that? We spent a lifetime training to man up and be tough. And suddenly to tell my friends that, you know, I wasn't feeling so great and I was getting cross with people and getting snappy at people and not sleeping particularly well. Um, wasn't necessarily something I particularly wanted to admit. I was worried they'd look at me and laugh at me uh, and think that maybe I was just, you know, need to man up a bit really. Thankfully, I plucked up the courage to do that and sort of approached one of my friends um, who kind of laughed out loud and said, yeah, me too. He said, I've had exactly the same issues. It's really funny. He said, I was pretty intolerant before. I'm really intolerant now. So actually, we are going to climb this mountain, 8,848 metres. And we're going to stand on the top of that where there's no oxygen, which I defy anybody to tell me that's a wussy challenge. And we're going to shout that message from the top. Guys, it's okay to ask for that help. So please come and do that.